Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be playing our first dragon of the week. And we're playing against the Alpin, okay. So this is one of those things where playing the dragon is a little bit less advised. Um, so we're going to be playing the dragon still, I think, uh, depending on what they do. But we're going to have to play it in a different way. So we're going to start with the move knight to f6. Uh, this is one of the most challenging variations against the Alapin. And this is why. Because they already hung this pawn. After taking on d4, we, we could have maybe just taken immediately. But uh, they actually had e5 there, funnily enough. So, oh well. So we take the pawn on e4. And we retreat. And we'll just get our normal dragon set up. We'll play g6, bishop, g7. Uh, we're quite happy now. Especially to play like this. Got to be a little careful of queen b3. But I think we can play d5. Bishop g7. And we'll castle. We're not worried of uh, knight f7 here. It's a huge waste of time. Queen b3. And now it's time for d5. Very important. Stops all counterplay against the pawn. Uh, when you develop naturally, make normal moves, generally the position should favor you. Uh, of course, if you're a really, really strong player at the like the top level, sometimes you see cases where that doesn't really happen. Most of the time it should work. And that's what I mean. So uh, my opponent played bishop to b5 and now bishop to a4. I think in the with the idea, if I play knight c6, then they can take it. But I actually have b5 here. That's why I played a6, because they actually have to move back. So now I would like to play bishop a6. The idea of bishop a6 is to prevent them from castling. And put up maximum pressure. Queen a4. Or anything. Yeah, queen a4 makes some sense to prevent knight c6. But at the same time, it just feels like we got everything we want here, right? Uh, I'm going to play knight to d7, and I'm looking for e5, right? As dragon players, you got to be willing to psh, blast open the position. And what's this knight doing on g, uh, g5, right? If they just played like knight f3 earlier, then they, they would have been able to cast a long time ago. I'm okay with giving myself a weakness, the d5 pawn as an isolated pawn. Because uh, the thing is, we have a ton. I got a... I gotta shuffle. I always gotta shuffle. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Gotta shuffle. Um, I get cold easily. All right. So, um, now that stops the idea, but also lets me jump in. Hmm. I also have this funny move, rook c8. If they take on a6, I can take on c1 and then h1, which wins the game. But we're also winning already, so. I'm not sure we have to worry about that. I'm just going to play h6 instead. Finally kick the knight away so I can get this e4 square for myself. Let's play knight e4. Funny thing is, this looks weird, but after b3, I think we have knight c5. I don't think we'll get to play it, but... It's worth a shot to mention it. Actually, this might be a move now. Queen a6, take on c1. Yep, this looks like a move. There's no way to defend this bishop on uh, c1 here. So we can actually take and then take on h1. This is a big problem for them. Bam. And they also can't develop this guy without just blundering this guy here on uh, A1. Which is nice. I'll just keep developing. This knight's already doing quite well. I, I think we can all agree, so I'm not really too concerned about uh, improving it too, too much. So there's knight g4 check here. But there's king d3. So instead, I think what I want to do is I want to go queen b6. And this is a nasty move. The threat is knight g4 check, king d3, 
queen a6 check and they actually can't defend their queen so uh if you look on this long diagonal these dark squares are covered they have to go to c2 so check and we win the queen on e2 here after king c2 uh and this looks like it's close to mate they can block on on d2 of course but um shouldn't last too much longer after they block on d2 we can take on a1 if they block with this knight we can always just take it or give a check on c8 i'm gonna opt for taking on a1 of course i think that's a good strategy and we'll take here a checkmate so that was a good game um a bit of a quicker one, but still really, really important. So after knight f6, uh, what you should see generally is e5, knight d5, and d4. One of the positions you want to avoid when you're playing dragon setups is if you play something like g6 here, you can actually run into a fair amount of problems uh, from these types of setups. If white can keep both of their pawns on either e4 and d4, sometimes e5, to shut down this bishop, you can actually find yourself just much worse. And that's not something you really want to do. Uh, here I think we have d5, so uh, play can get kind of interesting, but I don't believe black is actually equalizing there. Instead, delaying g6 in other scenarios where maybe it's a little bit better is a much better option. That's why I like starting with knight f6, because after e5, knight d5, what you'll see is d4 most of the time. You can take it uh, and uh, try to just break open the center with d6. So that's kind of one of the advantages of um, playing like this. Is that, for example, if we get to take once and then play g6, that actually makes a lot more sense now. Uh, the critical line you have to know is, of course, what happens if bishop c4 in these positions. It gets messy, but it's something to know. I think that's going to cover it for that part. But yeah, after d4, they do just hang a pawn. And I did something really stupid here. I just took here thinking they have to take back. But now after e5, knight d5, and takes, we just transpose. So I almost let them get off the hook here. Instead, if I take, the idea uh, behind this move is if they take, we can now take with the knight. Uh, and then just like retreat it to like e6 or, or whatever. Play d6 and knight d7 if we really need to. Uh, even if we put it on like a semi-awkward square, well, we do have an extra pawn and we will still get developed relatively quickly. Actually, the knight on e6 does a good job helping us, right? Uh, because after g6, bishop g7, then knight's actually covering the bishop too. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and after winning the pawn, our opponents were not really too focused on development. No matter what here, I was planning d5 which would have been nice, and uh, of course just block it at this point. Uh, but they also wasted a little bit more time by bringing their knight into the game, letting me castle, and now d5, bishop b5 isn't even check, or after a6. Uh, they have to move to like d3 or e2, but guess what the evaluation of this position? Plus one pawn, but guess what the evaluation is? And this should tell you how important development is. Bam. It's minus five. Uh, meaning we're completely winning as long as we make relatively normal moves, right? They also do have some weaknesses, and this this is a huge problem. But even after bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, it's just even worse, of course. So uh, that's going to cover it for this game. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. All right. <laughs>